Hello friends and welcome back. In this video we're going to talk about one of the types of subordinate clauses that is noun clause. Let us try to understand what is a subordinate clause first. We have discussed subordinate clause in the last video as subordinate clauses are the clauses that are attached to the independent clauses. They do not convey complete meaning unless they are attached to independent clauses. They are also called dependent clauses. Subordinate clauses can be studied under three categories depending on their functions in the sentence. When they function as the nouns, they are called nominal or noun clauses. When they function as an adjective, they are called adjective or relative clauses. And when they function as an adverb, they are called adverb clauses. Thus, Three main categories of subordinate clauses are noun clauses, adjective clauses and adverb clauses. Noun clauses are also called nominal clauses and adjective clauses are also called relative clauses. This is what you have to remember. Now let us start talking about noun clauses. Let us try to understand noun clauses in detail. What is a noun clause? Noun clause is one that works as a noun in a sentence. We know that a noun can function as subject, object, complement or the object of preposition in the sentence. Similarly, noun clauses can also function as subject, object, complement or the object of preposition in a sentence. Have a look at these four sentences in which noun is functioning as subject, object, complement and the object of preposition respectively. In the sentence, Kumar is playing Kumar is the noun functioning as the subject. In the second sentence, she loves tea. Tea is the noun and it is functioning as an object. In the third sentence, she is a girl. Girl is a noun and it is functioning as a complement. And in the sentence, she lives in Delhi. Delhi is a noun and it is functioning as the object of preposition. Remember, there can be a noun phrase or a noun or a noun clause in place of subject, object, complement or object of preposition. Now try to look at these sentences. These are the six sentences. See the first sentence, moving the wheels is also playing. In the sentence, moving the wheels is also playing. Moving the wheels is a noun clause and it is functioning as the subject. In the second sentence, she loves what I hate. What I hate is a noun clause functioning as the object. In the third sentence, she is to be married today. To be married today is a noun clause and functioning as the complement. In the fourth sentence, she is about to go. To go is a noun clause functioning as object of preposition. And in the fifth sentence, they told me to eat fruits. To eat fruits is a noun clause and it is functioning as the object. And in the sixth sentence, they told me that she is a teacher that she is a teacher is a noun clause and it is functioning as the object of course it is functioning as the direct object of this sentence now try to look at sentence number one three four and five in sentences one three four and five non-finite verbs are used which non-finite verbs are used in these sentences first is moving second is to be married and the third is to go and the fourth is to eat so, non-finite verbs used in these clauses represent the non-finite clauses. These clauses can be called non-finite clauses because they are introduced with the help of non-finite verbs. While in sentence number 2 and 6, you can see the verb hate and ease is used. That means these clauses are not non-finite clauses but they are the finite clauses. Depending on this, the clauses, noun clauses, basically are classified into two categories called finite noun clauses or non-finite noun clauses. We have to understand finite and non-finite clauses are the different categories. In noun clauses, you have finite noun clauses and non-finite noun clauses. In adjective clauses, you have finite adjective clauses and non-finite adjective clauses. And in adverb clauses also, you have finite clauses and non-finite clauses. So, finite and non-finite is a different kind of classification. Noun clause, adjective clause and adverb clause is a different kind of classification. In all the three categories, that is noun clauses, adjective clauses and adverb clauses, we have finite clauses as well as non-finite clauses. I hope this is understood. Now, let us talk about 
finite noun clauses. Noun clauses are also called nominal clauses, so we can call them finite nominal clauses also. Now, noun clause with a finite verb is called finite noun clause. In simple words, nominal clauses or noun clauses in which there is a finite verb are called finite nominal clauses or finite noun clauses. Let's have a look at these examples. I told him that he is a teacher. In the sentence, I told him that he is a teacher, that he is a teacher is a noun clause and there is a finite verb is used in it. Therefore, it is a finite noun clause. Look at the second sentence. He told that they are coming. In the sentence, he told that they are coming, that they are coming is a finite noun clause because there is the verb are coming here and this is a finite verb. In the third sentence, what he does still remains some mystery. What he does is a finite noun clause because does is a finite verb. And in the fourth sentence, I know who has stolen your bag. Who has stolen your bag is a noun clause and it is a finite noun clause because it has a finite verb has stolen. If you look at these sentences carefully, you will find that these clauses are either introduced with the help of that or with the help of a WH word. Therefore, finite noun clauses can be classified into two categories, namely clauses introduced with that and clauses introduced with WH word. The clauses which are introduced with the conjunction that are called that clauses and the clauses which are introduced with the help of WH word are called WH clauses. Remember, all these clauses have finite verbs in them. Let's understand nominal finite that clause first. Nominal finite that clause is introduced with the help of conjunction that. We have already discussed that a noun, a noun phrase or noun clause can function as subject, object, complement or object of preposition in the sentence. Let us try to understand how a noun clause functions as subject, object, complement or the object of preposition in the sentence. Look at this sentence. That I was not guilty has been proved in the court of law. In the sentence, that I was not guilty has been proved in the court of law, that I was not guilty is a subordinate clause. It is a nominal finite clause and it functions as subject of the sentence. The rest of the parts of the sentence function differently. We are not going to talk about them because we are concerned with the nominal finite that clause at present. So let's talk about that. Now in this sentence, that I was not guilty is the subject and it is functioning as noun clause while has been proved is a verb phrase and in the court of law is a prepositional phrase functioning as adverb of this sentence. One of the easiest ways to understand whether the particular group of words in the sentence is noun clause or not is to replace this with the help of a pronoun like it, this, that or something like that. And if the sentence communicates a proper meaning, then consider that it is a nominal clause or a noun clause. Look at this sentence that I was not guilty has been proved in the court of law. That I was not guilty can be replaced with the help of a pronoun it. The sentence will become it has been proved in the court of law. The sentence communicates proper meaning. Therefore, this is a nominal clause. Let's try to understand how noun clause functions as subject, direct object, indirect object, complement, object of preposition in the sentences with the help of these examples. Look at the first example. That the earth rotates is an established truth. In the sentence that the earth rotates is an established truth, the part that the earth rotates is a subordinate clause. It is functioning at the place of the subject and therefore it is a noun clause because it is functioning at the place of a noun. It can be replaced by it. The sentence becomes it is an established truth. Similarly, look at the second sentence. The teacher told that the earth rotates. In the sentence, the teacher told that the earth rotates, that the earth rotates is a subordinate clause and it is functioning as the object of this sentence. You can replace this part with the help of a pronoun that. The sentence becomes the teacher told that or the teacher told it, something like that. Look at the next sentence. She told me that the earth rotates. In the sentence, she told me that the earth rotates, that the earth rotates is again a nominal clause. It is a subordinate clause. You can see that it is functioning as the direct object of this sentence. 
This part can also be replaced with the help of a pronoun. So sentence will become she told me that or she told me this thing, something like that. So this part can be replaced with the help of a noun or a noun phrase. Therefore, it is again a noun clause functioning as direct object of this sentence. Have a look at these sentences and try to understand which of them is a subordinate clause. The underlined parts of the sentences are the subordinate clause in these sentences. The first sentence is, I know that he is a doctor. The second is, that she is a teacher is the truth. The third is, she told that her cat is missing. The fourth is, they told me that I was wrong. And the fifth is, there is no meaning in what she says. All the underlined parts of the sentences are subordinate clauses. They are typically nominal that clauses. Now, let's try to understand nominal finite WH clause. Nominal finite clause introduced with the help of WH words, that is what, when, why, how, whether, etc. or sometimes if, is called nominal finite WH clause. The clause that is introduced with the help of WH word or if, if is a word, is called nominal finite clause. See this example. I don't know who's coming tomorrow. In the sentence, I don't know who's coming tomorrow, who is coming tomorrow is a subordinate clause and it is a noun clause or a nominal clause and it is a nominal finite clause. If you look at this sentence carefully, you will find that in this sentence, I is functioning as the subject don't know is a verb phrase and who was coming tomorrow is an object. Let us apply the earlier test to this. The test is to replace the part of the clause with a pronoun. See this example, I don't know who is coming tomorrow. Can this be replaced by a pronoun? Let us try to replace it with the help of this. I don't know this. Isn't this a correct sentence? Yes, this is a correct sentence. Now, the part can be replaced with the help of a pronoun. That means it is a noun clause or a nominal clause. Have a look at these sentences. How she managed it is an unknown fact. In this sentence, how she managed it is a subject and it is a noun clause and it is a finite clause. Is is a verb and a known fact is the complement. If you try to replace how she managed it by it, it becomes a sentence. How it is an unknown fact. How she managed it can be replaced by it. Therefore, it is a noun clause. Look at another sentence. The teacher told what she did. In this sentence, the teacher is the subject, told is the verb, and what she did is the object. Can this be replaced by a pronoun? I think yes. The teacher told that. That means the teacher told that thing. You can replace it either by a pronoun or by a noun phrase. Look at yet another sentence. She told me why she had left the class. In this sentence, she is the subject, told is the verb, me is an indirect object, and why she had left the class is the direct object. Now, can you replace this part with the help of a pronoun? I think yes. Let us see this example. She told me that. Or you can also say, she told me that thing. That means you can replace it either with, with the help of a pronoun or with the help of a noun phrase. Now look at the following examples. Only she can tell if it is the truth. Look at the second example. Critics could not tell whether India will win or not. Look at the next example. If she is telling the truth, can be verified with the help of a lie detector. See yet another example, I know who has given him a chocolate. See yet another one, who knows the whole story is confidential information. And look at this last one, whether she lives is a mystery. See, it is also possible that uh, the adjective clauses or relative clauses are also introduced with the help of WH words and that also. Even Adverb clauses are also introduced with these words like if and other words. So just don't concentrate on the words. Okay. Concentrate on the function, the functional group in the sentence. So that you understand what is the function of a particular group of words in that sentence. The points of confusion are there. We'll talk about these points of confusion later on. 
Let us talk about WH clauses and its function. Let's talk about the functions of the nominal WH clauses. The functions of the nominal WH clauses, WH finite clauses in fact, are similar to the functions of nominal finite that clauses. That is, they can function as the subject, they can function as the object, direct or indirect, they can function as the complement, or they can function as the object of preposition, or they can also function as the object of an infinitive clause. Let's have a look at these examples. See the first one. What she does is her own choice. In this sentence, what she does is functioning as the subject, and it is a nominal finite WH clause. I believe what she tells, what she tells is functioning as the object and it is a nominal finite WH clause. She told me what he did to her is also functioning as the object but it is functioning as the direct object. I'm not what you think. In this sentence, what you think is the complement and it is a nominal WH finite clause. Look at the next sentence. There is no meaning in what she says or what he says. It is functioning as object of preposition. And look at the last sentence. I wanted to tell what she had done. In this sentence, it is functioning as the object of infinitive clause. So these are the, some of the examples which explain the function of nominal finite that clause and nominal finite WH clause. Like nominal finite that clause and nominal finite WH clause, we have also nominal non-finite clauses but as this video is getting longer and longer i think we'll conclude this video with nominal finite clauses only and we'll talk about nominal non-finite clauses in the next video i hope you have concentrated on the nominal finite clauses there are two types of nominal finite clauses that is that clause and WH clause. That clauses are introduced with the help of that and WH clauses are introduced with the help of WH word or if. Remember this. In the next video, we'll be talking about nominal non-finite clauses. If you have liked this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and do not forget to subscribe if you are new to this channel. Thank you very much for watching.